the French press was supposedly invented um, in the 1850s, but wasn't patented until the, uh, the 1930s, and it was by an Italian man. This is a really interesting method. It's different than all the rest of them because it um, uses a, a mesh grind inside of it. It's funny, kind of, when I came into coffee about four or five years ago, this, this seemed to be the, uh, like the hot thing. What, what was so popular about it and what people were moving away from was paper filters, which people were arguing against that they kind of captured all these oils and these fatty acids. This gained popularity because it's a mesh filter. And what it does, it's a little bit, if you look at it, it's a little bit bigger. Um, it lets sediment through, it lets um, kind of some of the grind through, it lets a lot of the oils through. So what it produces is a huge bodied coffee. Like the use of water to clean coffee, like to clean that, that meat off coffee, produces this really clean, nice, kind of crisp coffee. And in my opinion, to put that in a French press kind of actually begins to take away some of that because it, it leaves too much body. Whereas you put that in a siphon, like a Guatemalan in a siphon, and it actually maybe exaggerates or, or highlights what has already happened in the farm. Certain coffees that work really well with certain methods and then other coffees that don't. If you think about a river, pebbles and rocks, water will go through these. So with, a, with, with bigger pebbles or bigger stones, water's gonna fly through there. It's not gonna be stopped. There's not gonna be um, much stagnant water there at all. With pebbles, it creates more of a, um, like a blockade, you know? It, it causes a slower flow. And because you're thinking about coffee, like this coffee, you are, there are a couple of things that are happening. Um, coffee is actually breaking down as water passes through it, and it is also imparting the flavor onto the water. It's cupping terminology, it's, it's, it's tasting terminology, body. I think the best analogy is probably like skim milk to whole milk. And some of these methods will actually bring more body or create less body. Acidity is generally already innate within the bean, but some of these methods will highlight that. Another would be aftertaste, like how does it linger? Um, again, like that might be that, you've heard me say clean a couple times, that might be a really clean cup might linger really well. It might leave you wanting more. Aroma. Like how does how does the aroma hit you? Aroma is going to kind of come like right when the right when the water hits. Um, it's going to create a uh, a smell that you can basically take. And then how does that aroma stay with the brew? Like so as it continues to brew, like how is that aroma? Um, does it dissipate? Does it stay around? Is it is it is it constant when it when the brew is finished? Is it still pretty poignant? So you're getting full coverage. Mm-hmm. So you want to soak all these grinds. I just kind of want to make sure all of the grinds are soaked. Like I don't want to create a ton of turbulence. I set the timer for four minutes. Um, it's a four minute extraction time. Yeah, so we'll just let this sit for four minutes. So this is going to be pretty warm in my and perspective. Who's the Finca? Who is it? It's Finca de Nueva Vina. And it's uh, these two brothers who own the farms. And they're actually German, but they, they're third generation farmers. Um, but, so what do y'all notice about this coffee? So what do y'all notice about this coffee? Is there anything that stands out? Think about those things like body, acidity. Um, how does it linger? Do you taste this like wine for you? Like, take a deep breath, breath. in, that taste. Totally. Do all that? Well, like my favorite mug is huge. It's like it's almost bowl-like, and I can stick my whole face in there, you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I would say get in there, you know, put your face in. There.